Hey guys, it's Erica here from Big Cat Creative and today I'm going to show you how to get your Squarespace social sharing logo the perfect size so it looks great on Facebook. I get this question a lot so I thought it was about time for me to pop on in here with an explanation of how the heck to get your social sharing logo the right size in Squarespace so that it doesn't look bad on Facebook. Luckily it's pretty quick and easy so let's dive in. The problem is that Facebook displays your logo in two different ratios. So you have what it looks like in the comments and what it looks like in uh, actual post. So these are just screenshots that I've taken from Facebook. But this one is just if you type the website out in and post. So that's the main image. And then if you comment on someone else's post, your logo is going to show up like this. So you can see that these are totally different sizes. If you look closely, you'll see that this rectangle version is kind of just a cropped version of this square logo. So we're going to use that method to create a logo that looks good in both the comments and the main posts. So getting that initial upload size right is really crucial to make it look good in both instances. So I'll scroll down. This is the main post with all of the information on it. And I've created this sort of template. So I will show you soon how to create this in Canva and how you would actually use this in a real situation. But if you're using something like Illustrator or Photoshop, you can head to the main post and just copy or use this template as a guide. So basically we're going to start with a square. I'm going to head over to Canva and I'm going to create a new square document. So I'm going to click create a design and I'm just going to use the Instagram post size 1080 by 1080 is fine. Then to make it even easier, I'm just going to pop back into my blog post and I'm going to copy. You might not be able to actually copy, copy this image directly from our site, but if you can't, you can just take a screenshot of it and the screenshot doesn't have to be perfect. It really is just guidelines. And then I'm going to head back to my square document in Canva and I'm going to place that new screenshot in. And just make sure it's roughly the same size as your artboard. So now we can use this template as a guide. And what we're going to do is put in our image and we're going to fill up the whole square. So in the example I just showed you before, I just had a color with my plain logo. So that is an option. You could do that or you could add an image behind it with your logo on top. Or you could just add one regular image. Some people use this too and leave their logo out of it. That is potentially a good option because you never can 100% rely on the way that Facebook is going to crop your social sharing image. So some people just opt for a plain image, but I do want to show you how to get that logo on there today. So I'm going to head back to Canva and I'm going to just duplicate this. And I'm just going to find a random image in Canva. So I'll just place this in. Maybe I'll reduce the opacity a bit. And then I'm going to add my logo in over top. So I'm just going to use a logo that I already have saved in my Canva and just pop it on top like that. Or you could obviously use the text tool and type out the name of your business. And what I want to make sure I'm doing here is I want to keep anything important inside this rectangle. So I want to fill up the whole square with something because remember in the comment section, the square is going to be shown. And in the post section, the square will be cropped off top and bottom. So in this case, this would work quite well because the whole square would show in the comments and then in the full Facebook post, it would look something like this. So that's sort of roughly where it's cropping top and bottom. I also recommend you leave even a little bit more room. So don't pull anything right out to the edges or anything like that, or the top cut off edge or the bottom cut off edge. Because again, like I just said, you can't ever really rely on Facebook to get the cropping 100% right. There are some variants I've seen like I've seen my logo displayed around Facebook in a number of different ways, but as long as you have that logo with a lot of 
breathing space around it and somewhere in the middle of the square. It's never cropped off. So I would just check it against the template and just make sure it's about right. So you can kind of see the lines here. So it's got plenty of breathing room at the top and the bottom and the sides. And we haven't put anything in the top quarter or the bottom quarter because that will get cropped off on the post view. So when you're all done, all you need to do is download your logo or save it depending on which platform you're using to design it. And you'll wanna save it as a JPEG or a flat PNG. So don't try and save anything with any transparencies because Facebook doesn't support any transparent elements. Once you've downloaded your file, if you're using Squarespace 7.0, you'll want to go to design, logo and title, scroll to the bottom and upload it here where it says social sharing logo. Or if you're using Squarespace 7.1, you'll want to go to design, social sharing and upload your logo here. Now it's important to note that you won't immediately see it populate on Facebook. It does often take a while for Squarespace to communicate with Facebook and then Facebook to update your logo on the front end. So if it isn't showing up, you'll want to visit this debugger tool from Facebook, paste in your website URL here and then click debug. And this basically is just going to tell Facebook that you've updated something and it's going to recrawl your website and pull your new images. So after you do this, it should show up right away. Otherwise you can just wait and it will probably update itself naturally within a couple of days. I will link this debugger tool underneath the video. So it is as simple as that. Just making sure you start with those right dimensions and leaving lots of white space for Facebook to do its thing and crop your image down without actually losing anything on your image. Hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below and I'll see you next time.